بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وبارك على أشرف الأنبياء مرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فحيا الله جميعا وبارك الله فيكم الحمد لله We've now reached hadith number 18 from this collection of ahadith by Sheikh Rabia ibn Hadi Ahmad Khalid. And Hafidahullah Ta'ala. And this hadith is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr. Qal qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arbu'a man kun fihi kana munafiqan khalisan wa ma kanat fihi khistatan minhun kanat fihi khistatan min al-nifaq hatta yada'aha. إذا تمنا خان إذا حدث كذب وإذا آهت غدر وإذا خاصم فجر. أو سيس حديث of Abdullah ibn Amr where he said that the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that there are four things that if a person has all four of them or has them then he is was considered to be an, يعني, a monafik, a hypocrite, in the purest sense. And if he has a characteristic from his characteristics, then he has a characteristic of hypocrisy until he leaves it. That if he is trusted with something, he breaks the trust, he betrays the trust. If he speaks, he lies. If he makes an agreement, he breaks it. And if he's an individual that disputes, he's foul in the manner that he disputes. He uses evil speech. This narration, in terms of its tahrij, uh, I wear the hadith are found, this narration is found in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan of Abi Dawood, Sunan of Tirmidhi, Sunan of Nisai, and the Muslim of Muhammad. As for the narrator of this hadith, the Rawi hadith, then the Shaykh Rabbi mentions is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. Al Qurshi, Al Suhmi, wa huwa Abu Muhammad. Waqi Abu Abdullah, Waqi Abu Abdurrahman. So he's a Sahabi, Ibn Sahabi. Now, Abdullah Ibn Amr al As is a Sahabi, Sahabi, Ibn Sahabi, son of a Sahabi. So a Sahabi, the son of a Sahabi. And he's one of the Mukhthirin of the Sahaba. The Mukhthirin was meant by here, and the Mukhthirin. Those at the rate over 1,000 ahadith. We mentioned them before. That is Kadarik. How many did we mention? Who can remember them very quickly? Who can remember them? Hulayra. Muslim Malik. Aisha. Ibn Umar. Ibn Abbas. Sayyid al Khudri. Jabir. Jabir Abdullah. Those are the seven. But now it mentions Abdullah ibn Amr from the Mukhthirin. Here, he mentions the Mukhthirin, Abdullah ibn Amr. But he's not from amongst those seven that I mentioned. So why is it mentioned here the Mukhthirin? Then why is it not mentioned after seven? But the, those are the seven that I mentioned. Those, those seven are those that narrated over a thousand. Sah? It is. They're over a thousand. So if you say over a thousand, then these are the seven. But it's mentioned, it's mentioned here that Abdullah ibn Amr is from the Mukhtarin. So the age? Age, what do you mean? In terms of uh, he was from Mustafa. Mm-hmm. Um, so one needs age, him and another. Sahabi, there's two of them. Mm-hmm. That, um, they're not mentioned of the seven. Uh, could be. There is it from the Sahaba, not necessarily that either. 
they never they never directly heard it from the front lines. Mm. So they heard it from the sub, maybe from the No, it's more to do with uh, how they're narrated. How the narrations are narrated. And generally speaking, the narrations are narrated. Yeah, I'm talking about these seven. They narrated these narrations by way of how. How did they, how did they take the narrations and, and narrate them after that? Yeah, but how though? Was word for word. Basically, from hif, from memory. So they're from, they, these ones are mentioned specifically because these, they have not only are they, those that narrated the most hadith, but they narrated these most hadith from memory. Naam, they narrated the most hadith from memory. As for Abdullah ibn Amr, then he wrote down the hadith. Abdullah ibn Amr wrote down the hadith. And he, Bel, he is the one that wrote down the most hadith. So the most companions, Abdullah ibn Amr wrote down the most hadith. As mentioned by Abi Huraira, Wazir al where he mentions uh, Abdullah ibn Amr wrote down more narrations than myself. As for myself, that I, I have memorized more than him. And so, where it mentions that he's from amongst the Mukfirin is that he, I memorized the most amount of ahadith. Now he memorized, or oh, sorry, he wrote down the most amount of ahadith. And so, what we understand from that, Barakallahu Fiku, is that that in of itself still carries great fodder. Still carries great virtue. Because we know from Talab, from a person's Talab is that they memorize, but also that they write down the notes and they write down that which they're hearing from their Talab al ilm and from their Mashaykh. Whether their Mashaykh be yani, scholars or in the case of the companions, their, their Shaykh of course was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But they wrote down in relation to that. Uh, this also... The fact that he wrote down the, the most amount of narrations is also a refutation and a rejection of those that say that you cannot write down a hadith or the a hadith were not written in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because the Sahabi Jaleel, Abd, uh, Abdullah ibn Amr, wrote down the narrations. He wrote down this, that, that which is this, uh, transmitted from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, likewise as well, that he was from the Abadila. In the four companions, the Abadila, who are who? Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, Naam ibn As, and one more. That's what you said, Abdullah ibn Umar. One more. Abdullah ibn Zubayr. So Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Amr, and Abdullah ibn Zubair. These four. Naam. So, why were they mentioned together as a, uh, as a group together? Why were they mentioned specifically these four? That they were young in age? Similar in age. So they're all similar in age, young in age, similar in age? No. And what else in terms of the virtue? That they were all fuqaha. Now they were all fuqaha from our companions. And the obvious thing as well that they shared? Name. Same name. Now, so that they were, this is why they were mentioned together. And hence why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is not mentioned amongst them. Now, because Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was elder in age. And from us, the kibar of Sahaba, you know, elders amongst the companions. And so we have these four that are mentioned together. Allah ta'ala a'alam. And Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhu, died in the year 68 after the Hijrah. In the year 68 after the Hijrah. As for the explanation of the meaning found in some of these, in, some, uh, in this narration, rather, we have an nifaq An nifaq is a mukhalafat al batin al zahir. So, nifaq, essentially, is where you find that that which is held within, or that which a person conceals within, opposes that which they make apparent. Now, I oppose that which they make apparent. And this is the affair of the nifaq of the munafiqeen. So, the, the nifaq of the munafiqeen, 
That which they make apparent is what? Islam. Iman. However, that which they hold within in reality is kufr. A disbelief. Then you have the word al ghadr tarq al wafa bima ahad ali. Al ghadr is the one that leaves off the agreement that he has established. He establishes an agreement and he leaves it off. Wal khasama al manaza'a. This word al khasama al mukhasama. Al mukhasama is yani a disagreement or what we do regard as being uh, a degree of uh, naam, dispute. And we understand from this affair of Mahasama is that we have two opposing sides. Which of course is what occurs in a dispute. You have two opposing sides. One person has one opinion, one person has another opinion. That's what Fujur is al mail and al haq wa ihtiyal fi raddihi. And so the Fujur is that a person turns away from the truth. And what they embrace is a rejection of it, a rejection of that truth. And al khiyana. is understood to be the one that turns or leaves off a trust. بِغَيْرِ وَجْهِ شَرْعِي In a manner which opposes the sharia. And so this could be, for example, بَيْعُهَا A person selling that trust. نعم how do you understand something if you say that I mean, bay of uh, 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 we trade a trust? What's understood by way of that? How do you understand that? Like a contract, like a contract of like allegiance, make it seem heavier. But you said you're, you're selling a trust. Oh, you agree upon it, then you lay it. That's something else. That's that's breaking an agreement. A trust could literally be something. Someone entrusts you with something of their of their belongings. I entrust you with this belongings, and then you go and and you end up selling it. Now I end up selling it. This is the betrayal of the trust. Now I trust you to hold it and look after it, and you ended up selling it. Now this is a betrayal. Of the trust by way of bay. Now, or the person does it, or the person just rejects that trust. He doesn't. He doesn't look after it, or he falls short and he and he has tahawan. Yeah, and he, he's negligent regarding that trust. For example, you could entrust an individual with one of your children. For example, one of your offspring. And then the person you've been trusted has to howl and they're negligent. So when you get your child back now, the child hasn't eaten. Nah, he hasn't, he has, there's, there's been no, nothing from Tarabiya. They might have had them for a certain period of time, let's say. So there's, and there's, there's clear negligence in relation to what you've trusted them with. This is Khiyad. As for the discussion of the hadith itself, the Shaykh Rabbi mentions that this affair of nifaq, of hypocrisy, is a down kabir, is a great and grave ailment. And this danger is significant upon Islam and the Muslims. And that is no doubt a blameworthy affair. Due to the fact that these individuals, Azharul Islam, they make Islam apparent as a means of plotting against the Muslims and as a means of attaining Masalih, as a means of attaining Masalih, attaining attain, yani benefits 
of Rabbi Dunni be benefit other than that. Or you may find as well that the people make Islam apparent due to the hypocrisy so that they are saved as a means of salvation against the source of Islam. So they know, for example, they are well aware of the ahkam, some of the ahkam in Islam where their blood is halal and they are upon kufr. So they remain upon kufr in reality. However, they conceal it and they portray that they are upon Islam in order for them to state that their, their blood is now yani, sacred, it's haram. And Allah Ta'ala mentions the land, mentions the curse on the, upon the munafiqeen. And that their hal is one which is blameworthy and it's threatened them, no doubt, with a painful punishment in the hellfire and a painful punishment in Dark al Asfal bin Adar and a painful punishment in the lowest depths of the hellfire. So Allah Ta'ala has mentioned their sifat. Some of the surah, some of the surah is found in the Quran. And this is so that the believers are well aware of who they are and what they're upon. And so that they may be wary of their evil, their plotting, and their filth that they come with. And so, within this narration, The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He outlines four characteristics That his munafiqeen have He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam outlines his four characteristics The first of them Is Khiyanat Al-Amana I that the individual betrays the trust <clears throat> and what evil mannerism to have and what is more evil and distasteful let's say that the people trust you with something or they entrust you with something whether it be with his wealth with his honour with a right from his rights And then you betray that. And so these things here mentioned by Sheikh Rabir in relation to the trust and what you can trust an individual with, then essentially these are the things, the first things from the things that he mentions are the things that are generally yani, sacred and a haram for the Muslim to take from anyway, either wealth and honour. And it's likewise, generally speaking, you can entrust a person with that. You can trust a person with your wealth. And when it mentions mal, your wealth, naam, when he mentions your wealth, it doesn't necessarily mean yani, cash, money. But anything that could be regarded as being yani, an asset that you, are, that you own. So you entrust a person with an asset that you own from, from your wealth. Naam. And then the person betrays that trust. We said the person can betray the trust by way of, he could even sell it. The person can betray the trust by way of being negligent regarding it. The person can betray the trust by way of leaving it off and, I, and stubbornly rejecting it. And so this is in relation to the wealth. Likewise, the honor of an individual. That a person's honor, now, again, is haram for the person to violate the honor of the Muslim. And take from the honor of the Muslim. This can be in many ways. And so when now a person is entrusted with that. For example, a person gives some information to an individual. Now, by something which is to his honor. It's not for that individual now to, to betray that trust. And 
Yeah, and you convey it to others. I convey it to others then again, with that betraying the trust. And betraying or harming the person's honor by way of it. Along with that, he mentions his hukuk, the general rights of the individual. That a person may have rights, and you take from those rights. For example, you, a person that entrusts you in a business dealing. And within that business dealing, you have an agreement. You take X amount of percent, you take X amount of percent. That's his haq now. You agree that that is his haq. That's his right. And then you betray that trust. So let's say, for example, you agreed that wherever the profits are in our business dealing, you take 20%, I take 20%, and we leave the rest for whatever. And when it comes to it, you leave him with 10%. You've taken something from his rights, from his due right. And with that, betray the trust. And so... This is no doubt, as mentioned, from the most evil things or evil mannerisms that a person can embody. That person entrusts him with something. And, tr- and when you entrust someone with something, that is, that is a manifestation of the fact that you trust that individual. And so that person turns that back on a person on another, that is harmful. And so... With that as well, from the khiyana, another form of khiyana and betrayal of a trust is a betrayal of a trust by way of conveying the haq, conveying ilm, conveying knowledge. That no doubt, the person needs to convey the truth. I'm not full sure in that. As Allah Ta'ala states, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتَمُونَ مَا عَنْزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْحُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَلْعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَلْعَنَهُمُ اللَّائِنُونَ Allah Ta'ala mentions, Allah Ta'ala states, Indeed those that withhold from that which we have revealed from clarity and guidance after we have clarified it to the people within the book. Indeed, they are those that Allah Ta'ala has cursed. And the people that curse will curse them. And those that curse will curse them. And this is in relation to this evil affair of what is referred to as kitman al-ilm, withholding knowledge. The withholding knowledge is a kabira min kabai zanub. Withholding knowledge is uh, is a major sin from amongst the major sins. And so, if a person now is aware of something, and it's a means of a guide of guidance to an individual, it could be a means of a person drawing nearer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The no doubt. Upon them is to convey that. And this affair of Kitman and Al, no doubt, as mentioned, is one that is of grave danger. With this, though, a person should not be fooled and should not allow the shaitan to fool them and lead them astray to the extent that they start to believe that this affair of Kitman and Al. Or avoiding kitman al-ilm means that they have to now become a da'i. That they have to be in front of the people. That they have to be the one that conveys whatever they know. No, rather, what is upon the Muslim is ilm, al-amal, wa da'wah ilayh. What is upon the Muslim is knowledge, acting upon it and according to it. However, that doesn't now mean that you have to be a front, in front of the masses, in front of groups, or embarking upon da'wah when you don't possess knowledge, which is the common doubt that Jamaat al-Tabliq they mention. For example, the group of Jamaat al-Tabliq, they don't mention that, no, we only have to, we're only conveying that which we know. But in reality, they open up the floor for the juhal, for the ignorant, 
and those that do not know better in the affair of da'wah and the da'wah of the anbiya to give da'wah to the people. Now what is upon the person is that they learn the truth, seek knowledge, draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then act upon it. And though they call and they call those that are closest to them. Closest to them being their families. Allah Ta'ala commands us, cool and fusakum ahalikum nara. Save yourselves and your families from the fire. Save yourselves and your family from the fire. And so thus, no doubt, when a person possesses something, he should not withhold it. But again, it's upon as Islam in all affairs. And all matters of our life, Islam is one which is, is, is a matter which is balanced. And so it's upon the person to strike that balance in this matter as well. Allah Ta'ala knows best. And it's upon those that carry knowledge that they convey that. They convey that to those that know Allah Ta'ala knows best. Then we have the second characteristic mentioned in the narration, which is the characteristic of al kadhib We mentioned the kadhib lying in the previous narration as well. And that lying in the hadith or in speech, the people's speech, that this is from the asas of nifaq, from the basis of nifaq, يعني, from the basis of hypocrisy. You cannot find that you have a monarchic, except that he lies. You, a person cannot be a monarchic, except that he's lying. Because, call him monarchic, yeah, the fact that he's a monarchic in the, in the first place, is due to the fact that he's lying. He is an individual that is portraying Islam and Iman. However, that is something which is kelim, it's a lie. For that which he holds within is, yani, uh, kufr, his disbelief. And so from the asas of the etiqad, from the asas of the creed of the monafiq, is lying. And again, this is from the most evil of mannerisms that a person can have. And the Shaykh goes on to mention, فَإِنَّ الْأُمَمْ فَإِنَّ الْأُمَمْ كُلَّهَا تَحْتَرَمُ الصِّدْقِ وَتَغْمَطُ الْكَذِبِ That all the nations, all of the nations, doesn't matter where you go, basically, essentially, it doesn't matter where you go in the world. Every single nation, or every single people, all the people, respect, yeah, and said truthfulness. And they look down upon and regard it as being lowly, the affair of lying. And so rather, the respect is for the one that adheres to truthfulness. And so it's a must that an individual he remains steadfast and strives to be from amongst the Sadiqeen. For me, amongst the Sadiqeen, for akwalihim wa fa'alihim. That they're truthful in their speech and they're truthful in their actions. Wa abta'idan al kalib wal kadibin. And stay far away from lying and the liars. For indeed, this is, this is from the Sifat, again as mentioned. The Munafiqeen, Allah Ta'ala states, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ إِنَّكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ رَسُولُهُ وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ That if the Munafiqoon come to you, they will state indeed, we bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah. 
But also know Allah Ta'ala knows that indeed you are his messenger. Allah Ta'ala bears witness that the Munafiqeen are liars. And this is the reality of these, of, of these Munafiqeen. That they are liars. They are upon Kedim. And so if a person is one that lies in his speech or lies for hadith in nas in the speech of the people, then he is taking a sifa from the sifat of munafiqeen. That's the first thing. Likewise as well, as is mentioned previously, it lowers the person, it lowers the person's estimation of others. How others deem that person to be it's course lowered due to the fact that they are known to lie, for example. And when it comes to a narration, then they will be referred to as those that are maturuk al hadith. Those that who hadith or whose hadith are abandoned, left off. Due to the fact that they are known to lie. And that's the one that lies with hadith and nas, lies when it comes to the speech of the people. Much less or much worse is the one that lies upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, from the most ashna, the most evil of characteristics that a person can have. And of course, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in relation to the one that lies upon him and kadhab alayya, but amidan. That whoever lies upon me intentionally, then let him take his seat within the hellfire. Thereafter, we have the third characteristic. Is the one that goes back upon an agreement. Again, this is from the most evil of the characteristics. Those evil characteristics of the one and from the characteristics of the Munafiqeen is that they agree upon something and they break the agreement. And so a person must be aware of falling into this particular characteristic. And the person rather, they should respect the agreements that they make. And be from those that Allah Ta'ala praises for, for respecting their agreements. Allah Ta'ala states that Ladina you fool nabi ahti lahi wala yang kodu na bil fika al bi tha. A Ladina you fu a Ladina you fool lahi wala yang kodu na al bi tha. Yani those individuals who fulfill the covenant with Allah and do not break the agreements. The fourth and final characteristic mentioned in this narration, Barakallahu Fikum, is that Fujur al Makasana is that they are evil in their speech when it comes to their disagreements. وَعَدَمَ الْوَقُوفِ in their حَقِّ And they're not seeking to يعني, arrive at the truth. And this in of itself is a grave sin. And a dangerous crime in of itself. And that. If a person, once they're in a dispute, they use evil speech. This will lead the person and draw the person towards greater evils. When a person then regards the, another's wealth or their honor to be halal. Or to freely take from the rights of another. Along with that as well, you find that these individuals that argue with falsehood 
They are those as well that will make muharabat al duat They wage war against the callers. And block the people away from the truth and guidance. And block the people away from the masalik, from those parts. Of that which is good. So, how many times do you find the Shaykh Meshit poses the question that? A person's wealth is regarded as being halal. Or their honor. Or their blood. Or the blood is spilt. All of this due to the fujur. Due to the evil of the munafiqeen. Evil of those evil individuals from the Muslim munafiqeen. And the evil they come with when they dispute. And how many individuals do you find? Murid al haq An individual that wants for himself the truth. However, that path to the truth is cut off from them. I buy individuals that don't want the truth for them. I don't want them to follow the truth. I don't want them to, I don't want them to adhere to the Salat al Mustaqim. And the Shaykh mentioned, وَلَوْ لَا الْفُجُورِ فِي الْخُصُومَةِ لَرَعَيْتَ الْمُعْدَ مُعْدَمَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مُلْتَزِمِينَ مَنْ حَجِلَّ I said, this, if it was not for and this evil speech when it comes to dispute, then you'd see the majority of the Muslims adhering to the manhaj Allah, ya the manhaj of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Adhering to the path of the believers and the Salaf of Salihin. And so what the Shaykh here is mentioning is that this evil speech leads to so much harm. Whether it be a dispute occurs and a person now loses himself, he uses evil speech in that dispute to the extent that he it, it causes greater harm, i.e. physical harm. Naam, so they send the person now as regarded, he sees that he can take from the blood of this individual, spill this person's blood. Or he sees fit to take from his wealth. Or he sees fit to take from his honor. All of this because of that evil speech in that dispute. And likewise as well, the evil speech in the dispute that you may find is that the person who is not acting essentially in good faith. And he's not mukhlis. He's not sincere in seeking the truth. He also acts as an individual that closes off that path to the truth for others. And he uses evil speech in order to do so when disputing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa naktafi bin bindillah bihaza qadr. Wa jazakum la khaira. Wa barak ala fikum. Wa sallallahu wa barak. Ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. وأخذ دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين شكرا